Hi, I'm Caroline Kramer, she said to the older woman in the elevator of their west side apartment building. Sandra Siegel, the woman replied, nodding, somewhat taken aback by the introduction. She held a little white-haired dog in her arms. Caroline petted it and exclaimed how beautiful it was. Her name is Betsy, Sandra Siegel said. She's absolutely gorgeous, Caroline said, letting the dog lick her fingers. As a general rule, few people in Manhattan introduced themselves in elevators. The lady with the dog was short-haired, graying, wearing slacks, sneakers, and a sweatshirt, the usual dress for a Central Park dog walk in early fall. When the elevator reached the lobby floor, Sandra Siegel let Betsy down and snapped on its leash. Then she nodded in acknowledgement and hurried away with Betsy in tow through the lobby to the street. Later, when Jules came home from work and they were having a glass of white wine before dinner, Caroline told him what she had done. Brave girl, Jules snickered, helping himself to a handful of nuts and washing it down with a deep sip of the wine. I felt good about it, Caroline said. I think it's awful that people don't communicate in New York apartments. Our elevator bank is a good place to display neighborliness. We lived too much in isolation in these apartment buildings in New York. After all, we do live under one roof. I suppose you're right, Jules acknowledged. He was a dyed-in-the-wool New Yorker, having been brought up in Brooklyn, migrating to Manhattan in the early 90s. He was vice president of a media company, married to Caroline five years now, but still postponing having a family. Caroline was from Hempstead, Long Island, a freelance copywriter who worked at home. They had bought the one-bedroom co-op on the 15th floor of a 20-floor pre-war building. Why not, Jules, she said, as if convincing herself. I go up and down the same elevator bank and often meet the same people. It doesn't hurt to be friendly, which is different than becoming fast friends. Why shouldn't we at the very least introduce ourselves? And she had a cute little pooch with her. And you fussed over her dog? Her name was Betsy and she was beautiful. No dogs for us, baby. Ties you down and you have to worry about kennels when you go away. I'm not tempted, but it was a cute dog and the lady was very proud of her. Cheers, he said, lifting his glass. May she and her canine have nothing but happiness. They clicked glasses and drank. Caroline acknowledged that she was one of those people who were naturally friendly. She liked to engage people in conversations, make eye contact, offer smiles. On buses, she talked to people and knew she had the kind of face that invited openness. She had the look of a compassionate person, and with her open, white-teethed smile round, cherubic, naturally rouged cheeks, and large blue eyes, she made others feel comfortable. You're you, he said, reaching for her hand, caressing it and bringing it up to his lips. I adore you. I know it's the right thing to do, to break this pattern of isolation. It startles people. They're not used to it. That's for sure, he said, agreeing. I guess we New Yorkers are wary of intimacy in our apartment culture. I'm not talking about intimacy, just common friendliness.